If you were to make a list of all the things people are afraid of, right near the top would be spiders and the dark. But as we're about to find out, if you let those things frighten you, you are missing out on a wondrous world right beneath your feet. These mountains are definitely a mess of roads. They are a little confusing in places. By day, Neil Marchington is a deputy sheriff. But get him off the clock, and chances are he's headed up some random dirt road, daughter in tow. Kind of a hairy spot, huh? Are you doing good, Aspen? He explores the rough roads most of us pass by because we assume they dead end in the middle of nowhere. But the spots Neil seeks rarely show up on maps, if they even have names at all. Oh, here we are, no name cave. You only find them by knowing where to look. You can tell oh, caves by there's always a keystone light trail <laughs> to known caves. It's one of the sadder parts of North American existence. <laughs> Neil is one of Oregon's most accomplished cavers. Chances are, if there's a passage big enough for someone to enter, he's crawled through it, or even helped discover it. It started out as a hobby, but in the past decade, he's carved out an unusual niche as a highly respected subterranean citizen scientist. You guys can hop in and we can all brief in there. Today, he's on a mission to find specimens of an undocumented white millipede species, as well as any other critters that he doesn't recognize. Any other spider species, harvestmen, pseudoscorpions, we're going to want to collect all of those, and we'll get them sent to the right people. In addition to his daughter, Aspen, he's bringing along his friend Lonnie Siders and BLM biologist Jason Riley. I think we're all ready to, to go downhill. No Name Cave begins with a tight belly crawl. Just watch your head as you come through. It's not a place for the claustrophobic, nor for the arachnophobic. Oh, hello. Oh yeah, harvestmen everywhere. Although, as Neil is quick to point out, the creatures commonly known as daddy long legs aren't actually spiders, or even dangerous. Spiders will always have fangs for envenomation. These harvestmen, daddy long legs, they don't have that. They don't envenomate their prey. Despite the old wives' tale about daddy long legs being poisonous, they are completely benign. Not that there aren't plenty of spiders to find in the cave's smaller entry chamber. I found an arachnid. Oh, did you? Yeah. He's cute. Cute? <laughs> yes. Can I see? He's on this web. And I'm just going to assume his gender. That is a female spider, but what species she is, I don't know. We'll try to scoop her up. The most terrifying thing about collecting arachnids in caves might not be the darkness or crawling through cobwebs. It might be this. You have to suck them up through a hose. There you go. I have a screen in here, but things sometimes come through. After they finish searching the antechamber, the team heads into No Name Cave's grand room. I love this room. Can you hear the, the resonance off the crystals? Just the echo? It's a big chamber just full of crystals. Looks amazing. Pretty cool bell formation. Yeah, the big Liberty Bell, and you can just see it glistening. It's just gorgeous. Here's a bat. The bat's hanging out on the wall, being adorable. Oh, nice. So you can see on the ceiling crystals forming in the water drops here. Just to get an inch longer takes probably at least 100 years. It's pretty remarkable how slow growing it is. While the adults marvel at the cave formations, Aspen begins to search them. I do not want to jump down that. One of my early childhood memories of Aspen is a cave in Nevada. We were 
dragging her through the cave at six months old and a baby bunting through crawl passages over mud. So that's sort of the way Aspen's grown up. She's never really known a life that didn't include, you know, caving and research in the field with invertebrates. And how many years has it been since you've seen Aspen's eyes? She's sort of hiding in her hoodie. It's been a, a thing that's new for seventh grade. I'm just too used to being in caves. I can't stand the sunlight. I'm a vampire. <laughs> that's my dad's fault. <laughs> No Name Cave and its neighbors in the Siskiyou Mountains stand out in Oregon because they are marble instead of the state's more typical lava caves. But what really makes these caves unique is one of the critters that calls them home. So we have a, a juvenile troglodyte. This is not an adult, it's a very small one. In 2010, Neil was part of a conservation group that was exploring a nearby cave when they came across a single mysterious spider. Neil volunteered to collect more specimens, and he found them here. We didn't know what it was in the field. We had no idea. There was some talk about it maybe being a new genus, which would have been exciting. Finally hear back that it's an entirely new family. It's something that hadn't happened in North America for over 100 years. The spiders seem to be an evolutionary throwback, frozen in time in these Oregon caves. Their closest relatives are spiders in the fossil record that crawled the earth in the age of dinosaurs. Under the microscope, you get these beautiful hooked legs. That was one of the things that inspired the troglodyte name, a dinosaur-esque giant hooked claw at the end that they used to grab the walls. But this lonely family of one species has more to its name than just Trogloraptor. Trogloraptor marchantoni. Of course, my last name is Marchington, and they were kind enough to name it after me. Newspapers worldwide were contacting me. The Telegraph in the UK did a really nice story. I noticed it made it into the Pakistani Times. So it was, uh, it was pretty remarkable. Caves play an exciting role in science because they are refuges. Primitive creatures like the troglodyte can persist here long after their surface relatives die off, providing a bridge to understanding the past. Good job. At the same time, caves are natural laboratories for evolution. So each new discovery can lead not only to greater understandings of the past, but possibilities for the future. And some of the cave creatures are, are really, really unique. Yeah. I'll be careful that I don't hurt him. Oh, that's beautiful. Isn't that nice? We've had a lot of research going on with cave bacteria. They may be new classes of antibiotics that could literally save us from pandemics. Uh, vampire bat saliva has come up with a really unique compound that's probably going to be just a remarkable treatment for stroke patients. If caves are at the forefront of science, then Neil is on the vanguard of that research. So, another one in. He can't even find enough scientists to document all the species he collects. Not all bear his name, though. Do you remember what your species is called? You have a species of harvestman named after you. I, I think it was like Tarrakis aspinae. Yeah, Tarrakis aspinae. They're from uh, Catherine Creek Ice Cave in the Wallawas. We've probably found at least 30 species new to science, and only a handful of them have gone all the way through the peer review process and are official. That's a remarkable feat for anyone, but particularly for someone without a science degree. Discovering a new species is kind of the holy grail of, of science. And um, well, Neil is kind of a legend, uh, at least in the biology world. Um, they say uh, every cave he goes in, he comes out with a new species. In the case of this trip, it's a small white millipede that one of Neil's scientific collaborators is finalizing with the help of one last specimen. Look, one's on my hand. <laughs> Nicely done, And there's Aspen. some others down here, too, I believe. You found a little pocket of them? Look at that, he's such a happy little guy. For Neil, finding new species is all part of the allure that keeps him driving down those abandoned roads and flying to far off places where a small hole in the ground can lead to a whole new world. Particularly today, we can look at satellite images and we can look at topo maps and we can use GPSs. None of that works down here. You can't see anything beyond your headlamp. I think that helps drive some of that fascination, just the unknown and never knowing what's really around the next corner or, or what you're gonna see today.